Okay, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to install metal old work boxes. In this case, we're going to end up ganging them together. I'm going to show you how to do that. Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today, I'm going to show you how to cut in a metal old work box. Now, I showed you how to cut in a plastic old work box, but today what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to snake some MC cable down a wall. We're going to gang two metal boxes together and I'm going to show you how to install Madison straps. Madison straps are, this is a Madison strap. We break them apart. Now we have two individual straps. This is what attaches the box to the wall so that it doesn't move around. Now it's important you understand how to use these properly. You can't just finger tight them. They actually have to be done a specific way. So, you know, I'm going to show you how to do that. So what do we have to do first? Well, first of all, we have to gang them together. Okay. So this is a metal, met um, this is a metal old work box, and this metal old work box is actually gangable. Well, the reason they're gangable is because I can loosen this screw out, and I can take the plate right off. Okay, so now this gives me a half a box. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, just like the other box, I'm going to put it together. Now that I have the two boxes apart, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide them together and I'm going to make my own box. Okay, so once they get, once they get married together, then all I'm going to do is take my screwdriver and I'm going to tighten the screw. Okay, now I have a two gang old work box. This here can also be bought in plastic as a two gang box, but you have the opportunity. I could add three, four, five, six of these on if I wanted to, but for this case, we're just gonna cut in two old work boxes today. All right, so again, just like, we, just like I showed you. So if you wanna see how to install a plastic old work box, go ahead and click the link above and you can watch how I cut in a plastic old work box. So again, I've got my jab saw. My jab saw is what I'm gonna need in order to cut the sheetrock in order to Put the box in the wall. So let's get started. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it up against the wall. So I want the top of this box to be at 20 inches above above finished floor. Okay. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it up sideways, or excuse me, I'm going to put it up against the sheetrock, and I'm going to take my level and I'm going to put my level on the box and I'm going to level it up. Once I have it leveled, I'm going to hold some pressure and I'm going to take my pencil and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the outside of the box. Now, this little, these metal wings here, you do not want to cut out because that's what's actually going to be holding on the sheetrock. Okay, you want to just cover where the box is all the way around. And then you're going to do the same thing underneath. Okay, so now that that's done, so now that I've circled out these here where my screws are going to go, okay, the rest of this material here is all going to be cover be still intact so that the box will actually fit against it nice and tight. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to take my level and I'm going to connect the dots. Okay. Now, when you look at an old, uh, when you look at the back of an old work box or the side, you can see, remember where I showed you where those screws are? They actually stick out a little bit. So what we're going to do is when we slide it in the box, we're going to actually notch for these screws and they are catty corner. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to notch out just a little area on these sides here so that the box will sit in nice and comfortably. Plus, when you stick your Madison strap in, you're gonna to wanna to know which way you want your wing to flip up. So, let's cut it out. 
Again, if you watch my other video, you'll know. I always like to cut my long ways first, okay, or cut my horizontal end first, because by cutting my horizontal end first, if I run into a stud, I can always move my box over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch in here. Okay, we know we're good. There's no stud in the way. So now I can come back and I can cut out, cut out my vertical. And we have insulation in the wall. That's not the end of the world, but it will pose a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so cut out where my screws go. So, the next step would be, let's make sure the box fits. Okay, because we want to make sure the box fits in nice and flush, okay? So, using MC cable, we have to do something first. We actually have to, we have to take the box out, okay? We'll take the box out, and then what we'll do is What we'll do is we'll snake the wire down, and then what we'll have to do to, to, to connect it, we have to actually put a connector on the box. So we'll pull the wire down, we'll put the connector on, we'll slide it up, and then we'll slide the box in, and then I'll show you how to strap it with Madison straps. All right, so in order to do this correctly, we have to install a connector. So I'm gonna use my Greenlee Roto-Zip, Okay, that you can purchase at any hardware store or electrical supply house, okay, wherever. Now, I am going to need to have a good amount of, of cable here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my roto split and I'm going to set it so that I can cut it where I need it to be. I'm going to squeeze it, give it a couple cranks, two, three, and you'll feel it kind of cut through. You don't want it to go too deep. If it goes too deep and it cuts your conductor, then that's a bad thing, okay? Take it right off. Take the jacketing off, okay? Plastic jacketing, which is disgusting. Take the jacketing off. Okay. All right, so one of the things in 2011, these here, called a redhead, or a red devil, or an Andy Short bushing, these were not necessarily required in the 2011 code, okay? Um, I always tell my guys, if you work for me, you're gonna use redheads, because I just feel more comfortable with them there, because this metal edge touching my conductor is bad, okay? So, are they required? They are not required, but they are required if you work for me. <laughs> so, I have a single MC connector. You want to make sure it's an MC connector, not a Romex connector. Make sure you look at the packaging and make sure that you understand exactly what type of connector you're using for what wire you're using. Okay, we're going to remove the lock nut. I'm going to loosen up here. Slide it in. And then we're going to tighten it down. Make sure it doesn't come off. All right, so now what we have to do 
is we have to knock out one of these knockouts. Take the knockout out in the top of the box. Slide it in. I'm going to bend the wire. Now, this is where the skill comes into play. Because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get this box in the wall with that wire there. And you saw that it was a little bit tight. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your wire and you're going to slide it into the little slot that you have open there and you're going to slide it in until the box goes in place. Then you're going to press it into place. Okay. Now, once it's in place, you're going to need to make sure that you get that wire in and those threads to come through. Okay. Now the Madison straps go in place. All right. So basically what you have is you have a long end you have a short end. The long end, you're going to want to use that on the screw end where you cut the little notch. So what I always do is I always put a little bend in it. Okay, so this way here, it'll give me a little bit of a bend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Madison strap, I'm going to slide it in, slide it over, and then I'm going to slide it up so it moves freely. Okay, once it starts to, once it moves freely, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it nice and tight. Okay, I'm going to push the wire out of the way, I'm going to wrap it around, I'm going to hold it in place. Now, the other side, I'm at the top here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it again the same way, and I'm going to slide it in, and I'm going to do the same thing. Same thing, it's going to be nice and tight. I'm going to push the box in and then I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to do the same thing. Now, once I get it to that point, what I'll do is I'll take my needle nose pliers and I'll grab a hold of it and I'll pull it tight and push so that I know that stays in nice and tight. Now that I put a little notch on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screw, my straight screwdriver and my, my nine inch clines and I'm going to straighten that part out. That's also going to take Now the box is tight in place. Okay, before I connect my outlets, okay, in an old work box, you need to take the ears off of the outlet. You just take them, twist them off. So, metal little workbox, make sure you put your green number 10 grounding screw in. All right, when connecting this, what I'll do is I will cut my, my green insulation and I'll strip out about an inch or so, take my razor knife and then I will remove the insulation. And then I will wrap it clockwise around this, my ground screw and my box will be grounded. I 
Straight up and down, and we're good to go. Okay, so that's how we install an old workbox. A metal old workbox takes a little bit of time to get used to, but if you're working in commercial, you're definitely gonna be installing metal old workboxes. Practice makes perfect in everything, okay? So don't get frustrated if the first time it doesn't go in. You're gonna have issues, but guess what? The more you work at it, the better off you're gonna get at it, and it should take you no time at all. Plastic old work boxes are way easier than metal old work boxes, but like I said, in commercial, we don't really have that opportunity to use plastic. So with that being said, I hope you learned something. If you like my video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you, uh, you know, if, if you've seen something that maybe you do something different out in the field or you've seen somebody show you how to do, leave a comment down below. As always, if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, please subscribe, ring the little bell so you get my notifications. I upload videos every Friday. At the same time, have a great day and be safe.